Various governments in Canada have been putting into place new policies, and these policies have been affecting immigration law in Canada. So in the next 20 minutes, we're going to be discussing these changes. Uh, so Colin, what are the new changes with regards to citizenship? So uh, since the new uh, current government came into power two years ago, they did uh, platform, one of their platforms was uh, a new citizenship act, which they did uh, put into force. And we're already seeing the effects of these new citizenship rules, which in a sense has made it easier to become a Canadian citizen. So we've seen in the last year, 152,000 permanent residents have become uh, citizens. Compared to previous numbers, it was uh, just over 100,000. So we're seeing a significant increase in the number of people who are accessing and applying for citizenship. And in, in a sense, it's become, as I said, easier. Primarily, it's the physical presence rule, which now requires you to be in Canada, physically present for three years as a Canadian permanent resident, three years in the prior five years. Under the uh, old citizenship rules, um, you had to have four years and six years. Uh, there is also language tests and knowledge tests um, and other requirements, and you can find all that on our site uh, under the citizenship menu. So in a sense, the, the most important element is that it, it, it now uh, requires less physical presence to become a Canadian citizen, and indeed many people are taking advantage of that, and we're seeing that in the numbers. And are there new criminality rules that are coming into effect? And who are they going to affect as well? So very interesting and, and quite important. Uh, perhaps a lot of people aren't aware uh, the implications of what's called Bill C-46. Bill C-46 was passed in June of this year. And it's going to take effect. Uh, the rules that I'm going to describe uh, are going to take effect on December 21st. Uh, in effect, anyone with an impaired driving uh, uh, conviction uh, either if you're a Canadian permanent resident and you are convicted of impaired driving, bear in mind that could involve alcohol or uh, other substances, particularly cannabis, which under Canada's laws have now, uh, October 17, cannabis is now legal in Canada for simple possession. Uh, and so you have to be very careful uh, if you are convicted of an impaired driving offense, whatever the substance may be, uh, you uh, can lose your Canadian permanent residence status no matter what your sentence is. So no matter how light uh, the, uh, the consequences are of a conviction, um, even if you plead guilty uh, to whatever the charge might be, uh, you have to be very careful because you are going to uh, trigger very serious consequences. You can lose, as I said, your Canadian resident status, and you can face deportation, again, even if it's your first time conviction with a very light sentence. Um, so if you are an intending applicant to Canada, if you have a prior conviction for impaired driving, generally alcohol, uh, we see this quite often. You have to be very careful. Absolutely, you need to speak with an immigration lawyer uh, to understand what are the implications of your prior conviction, no matter how many years back it is. So you need to sit down and discuss with a, a professional who will be able to assess the implications. If you have a recent conviction for impaired driving, uh, you will be inadmissible to Canada, quite simply, even if your dependent is convicted. Uh, has a charge and a conviction of impaired driving, again, that can certainly that can render you inadmissible to Canada. So if you're sponsoring a partner or uh, a de facto spouse, um, you need to be very careful. Again, if that individual has a prior conviction for impaired driving, very serious consequences you need to look at to make sure they don't help, to make sure how they're going to affect uh, whether you're admissible to Canada or not. So principal applicant, dependents, someone sponsoring, or an actually, if you're a Canadian permanent resident, you need to be very careful, bearing in mind statistics show just in among Canadians, each year there's, there's more than 70,000 uh, impaired driving convictions in Canada. Bear in mind, again, Canada will be welcoming more than 300,000 immigrants uh, per year. So you must be very, very mindful <clears throat> of these new rules which come into effect in December. Okay, so moving on to Quebec. <coughs> uh, what are the implications of the new Quebec government on immigration policies? 
This has become uh, an interesting topic for uh, practitioners and, and as well applicants to Canada. So on October 1st, a new government was elected in the province of Quebec. Bear in mind, Quebec has authority to bring in its own immigrants under its own immigration rules and its own policies, quite uh, unlike the other provinces, although they are uh, given powers to uh, welcome individuals. The rules for Quebec are quite more uh, defined and, and quite wider than any of the other provinces. So the new leader is, is, no, uh, is, is part of the government called the Coalition Avenir du Québec. Uh, it's led by uh, its current uh, premier of Quebec, François Legault. And he had campaigned to reduce immigration levels in Quebec. Uh, currently, Quebec brings in 50,000 immigrants on an annual basis. 30,000 of them approximately are in the economic class. The new prime minister campaigned on reducing levels to Quebec by 10,000 per year. Uh, we're obviously going to uh, watch carefully how he's going to achieve this, bearing in mind employers are relying on this government to ensure the continued very robust economic conditions. Employers are facing shortage of workers in all regions of the province. So it's going to be a very careful uh, challenge. It's going to be a challenge, a balancing act, however you want to describe it, for this new government to carve out how it's going to cut immigration levels in the face of Quebec doing so well economically. Uh, lowest levels of unemployment in decades. Uh, clearly the job creation front uh, is uh, something that cannot be ignored. Uh, so we are, are, are watching carefully on how they're going to reduce levels if they're going to be doing it at all, and it would only start uh, in 2019. And we've heard about the new government's plans to force new immigrants to take a, a French language test after being a permanent resident for three years. How realistic is this? So that's really controversial. Of course, we have uh, in Canada uh, a, a division of powers on what uh, the various provinces can do when there is uh, a play in immigration. Of course, the federal government has exclusive authority to uh, patrol its borders and issue passports and issue Canadian permanent residents. Uh, so it's really exclusively in the territory of the, of the federal government. Now, there are also charter considerations. We have a, a charter law, that's a, uh, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms in Canada, known as the uh, Canada uh, Charter. Uh, those, there are restrictions on what governments cannot, uh, what kind of legislation they cannot put into force. And clearly there are, will be challenges if the Quebec government uh, tries to uh, add conditions on maintaining Canadian permanent residence for any uh, of its uh, citizens and, and permanent residents in the province. So we're going to certainly see challenges. Ottawa will certainly have concerns and individuals will have a, a, an array of arguments to, uh, to uh, submit that will bring into question the actual authority of this government to carry out its uh, claims that it's going to put in language tests. Although very interesting, uh, perhaps not overly realistic, and in, 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 in the short term, uh, it's very doubtful that they'll be able to uh, put these uh, rules into place uh, you know, uh, with uh, any meaningful impact. But again, we're going to watch very carefully. And so what's the status of the new Quebec expression of interest system? As uh, people may know, uh, Quebec has implemented uh, recently in the uh, last few months uh, a system very similar to the express entry system on the federal side. Uh, no more uh, will we be uh, first in, uh, applying first, uh, you'll get your application treated first. It's really applying into a pool uh, very similar to the federal system. The new system now has just been launched and what we're waiting for is to find out uh, how you get out of the pool. When will the first invi the, the period of invitation uh, take place, the first draw? We haven't seen that yet. We're watching and we're waiting to see exactly what kind of candidates are going to be uh, given you know, invitations to apply. Uh, bear in mind to even go into the pool, the requirements are very low. And don't be fooled and don't be misled by the fact that just going into the pool for Quebec it does not mean that you are qualified. You need to be sure that you pass and you have the right scores 
to get out of the pool, you need to pass a preliminary selection grid uh, in which if you're a single applicant, you need 43 points to just get through the first selection phase. If you've got a partner or spouse, you need 52 points. Uh, it, it, once you pass the first grid, there's another uh, series of factors that you are going to be assessed under. Uh, so you'll need 50 points if you're single and 59 points So uh, if you've got a partner. So uh, to get a, an actual nomination, you're going to have to have a certain number of, of, of points. And uh, bear in mind, again, don't be fooled by anyone suggesting to you they're going to apply for you and put you into the Quebec uh, expression of interest system. Uh, because you may be in the system, but you may have zero chance of qualifying. Again, working with a professional who knows these areas and who understands these distinctions probably will put you in good standing. Okay, so what should interested employers and candidates do if they would like to apply to Quebec? If you are a candidate, obviously you need to be very careful uh, and understand what it takes to go into the system. Without a doubt, you, if you have a sponsoring employer, that is the gold standard in the Quebec uh, system. Uh, you have to uh, bear in mind uh, priorities are being given to people who have a job offer, uh, a, a qualified sponsoring employer. So we can't underestimate the importance or we can't overstate uh, the importance of, of having a sponsoring employer. But it is not required if you have the right credentials, just as it is on the federal side if you have the right score and the right qualifications, you may not need a sponsoring employer. But again, uh, given the really robust economy, the, the state of the labor market in, in Quebec um, and in Canada for that matter, uh, finding an employer is uh, re uh, realistic for so many applicants. Uh, if you're an employer, of course, the Quebec system will allow you to retain your, your uh, workers and your foreign uh, candidates who are working in your uh, establishment. So retention is a great, now it's a great, uh, the permanent resident side of things, the new system in Quebec will really help employers. Uh, and if you are in need of candidates, uh, immigration.ca is well positioned uh, to help uh, employers uh, in finding top talent through our Global Recruiters of Montreal, our in-house recruitment enterprise, as well as uh, uh, skilledworker.com. Uh, we have two excellent resource tools and, and business, you know, standalone enterprises uh, in which we are very active in sourcing foreign uh, nationals, foreign workers for Canadian and Quebec employers. Explain to what we explain to readers what we do for individual applicants. Okay, so for individual applicants, so on top of the immigration assistance, we also provide the employment search assistance, as Colin has mentioned. Uh, so we provide a Canadian style resume, a resume that Canadian employers prefer to navigate, a database of potential hiring employers, and this would be tailored to you. So you would choose where in Canada, the provinces, as well as the industries, as well it will provide you with a cover letter and other tools to assist you with your job search in Canada. So, Colin, uh, I mean, that brings us to the end of our live stream. Yep. So, I mean, if, if you're interested in finding out if you qualify, uh, please go to www.immigration.ca and complete our free online evaluation form, and we'll then get back to you with your options. And if you're an employer, please go to the Contact Us section of our website. And as always, please follow us on our social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. So... Thank you very much for joining us and stay tuned. We'll keep you updated on when our next live stream is going to be. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. Thank you.